Tensei, Busu, Hani. We are on the unceded territory of the Algonquin people, um, in also known as Ottawa, and we are here with the Institute of Aboriginal People's Health. Um, and we are starting the second cycle of the Elder Youth Dyad. Uh, CIHRIPH is starting to work on its second strategic direction. So they want to build from the first one that we did back in 2010. Helping the youth to believe in where they come from, who they are. It was important for us when we came together, they brought this team of Indigenous scholars that we did this work in a good way. And so starting in a good way was always acknowledging our elders. And then we started um, talking about the importance of the contribution of our youth with the crisis situation. So we wanted to create an opportunity where we were actually bringing elder youth together. We put out applications across Canada. I think there was about 75 applications that came in. 25 were selected based on their contribution to number one, their communities, the work that they were doing. And um, we were looking, what was key for us is to start um, building capacity of the youth that who were already doing this work in their community. The work that you're all going to invest in now is for our children. And um, I look to our elders in the room and our knowledge holders in the room to set that direction. And um, don't be afraid to share what we need to do. I've, um, I'm passionate about um, harm reduction and um, removing the stigma from mental health and, uh, and addictions. I want to bring um, awareness. I want to bring, uh, how, like I said, I want to remove that shame and that, and that stigma. I feel that a lot of the um, First Nations teachings are based around abstinence and based around um, we have zero drugs, zero alcohol. I feel that that is wonderful if that can be, but in a lot of cases it's, it's not. It's, it can't be because of the hor horrible emotional pain and, and suffering that's happened in, in the residential schools and, and even uh, generational trauma. We must speak up. We must. I feel that the, um, the loss of identity and culture has led to uh, a lot of people being lost and a lot of people that that causes uh, an emptiness and that emptiness people fill it. Due to our history, our nation's history of residential schooling, we are going through an identity crisis in regards to our culture and our ancestors' traditions and our language. It's all been stolen from us and we are going through the very difficult and long procedure of gaining back what was rightfully ours. We have ways of knowing and it's still in our DNA and our blood memory and that we must come from that place. Um, we must never forget who we were as a people and even living in concrete urban jungles, they call them. It doesn't take away who we were as a people. I know the history. I know who I am. And I, the more that our girls know who they are, the more strong that they have become. Our history is in the land, it's in the language, it's in the culture, it's in our ceremonies, you know. And uh, I, I believe that, you know, the youth, that's theirs too, and, and they deserve that. I think that it was so important for us to come here as an elder youth pair because our perspective from um, members of a community so isolated in the north, um, our opinions on uh, strategies toward wellness are really unique and that goes hand in hand with uh, the path that we need to take. The message that we bring to this conference is how to use and uh, revitalize our culture and spirituality and language in a concrete setting. We invite them to ceremony, we invite them to sing with us, you know, and, and, and seeing that part of them grow 
you know, and, and making them whole and balanced again. It is so empowering to know that they know who they are now. They know that they have these beautiful gifts. You know, despite all the traumas and all these things, the gift is what stands out to me. They had to be there for their, their children in their community. I was thinking about, like, the, the first season was like, we, could, we couldn't communicate or we weren't allowed to talk. This season, uh, for me and the youth generation, we're able to open up now. Because we are people of the land. This is where Creator placed us. And so we, we share that and, and knowing that, you know, one day that they'll be strong again and knowing that there are people of the land, they won't be disconnected anymore, no matter where they are. Well, I draw incredible strength from my great aunt Sarah. I call her my Nana because she's a, practically a grandmother to me. Um, the suffering that she went through in residential school affects me through intergenerational scarring, but seeing how she's healed from that, that affects me on a much greater scale. That gives me the faith I need to uh, have trust that our culture and our heritage and our traditions was something that can't be lost.